What is the difference between agar spherification and alginous spherification? Well, today on WTF, we're going to look at all the ins and outs of both agar spherification and direct spherification and make an amazing carrot cake. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients and techniques, and we show you how to do these recipes in your kitchen. So remember, subscribe, ring the bell, and you'll get notified next week when we come out with our next cool thing that we're going to talk about. And this week we are covering spherification. Specifically, what's the difference between cold oil spherification and alginous spherification? And you may have already heard these terms being thrown around in our various episodes, or they might be new to you for the first time. Either way, we're going to tell you exactly how you can do them. And remember to stick around for the giveaway, because this week we're going to be giving away one of these new matte black spherificators. So you're going to want one, because it's pretty cool to have it in your kitchen. All right, now I think um, maybe Scott, for the people who've never heard the word spherification before, let's go over what exactly is spherification. Great, so spherification is actually taking a liquid that's flavorful, whatever it is that you want to make, you're going to uh, add a few ingredients to it, and then you're going to solidify it into either a ball or a little kind of pillow that will burst into flavor. I can go into deeper uh, breakdown of spherification. So there's two types agar and uh, traditional direct spherification. Mm -hmm. Direct spherification is the one that you've probably seen the most, right? Mm -hmm. And what that is is sodium alginate and calcium chloride. And sodium alginate is a, is a uh, ingredient that you add to your flavorful liquid and it's going to thicken it slightly. But when sodium alginate comes in contact with calcium chloride, it grabs onto those calcium ions and it kind of creates a net around that uh, juice on the inside. Mm -hmm. And so you, you allow it to sit in there until it creates that gel and you rinse it off and you have these basically little balloons that pop or little caviar spheres, whatever mm -hmm. it is, that will pop and release all of that flavor. And it's a really cool presentation. It's uh, doing things in a completely different way. Like we have ginger uh, direct spherification here today. So it's a really amazing way to get all the flavor that you want in your dish just in a really different magical kind of way. Yeah, you might be familiar with it. Um, I think when you go to like some yogurt places, they'll give you little pearls on top of their, your, uh, your yeah. yogurt. So that, <coughs> that kind of popping liquidy sensation, that's the alginous spherification. Yes. And we can go on for like another half an hour about it. We're, we're not going to that's today. Alginate, you said. Alginate. Agar spherification. So My yeah, apologies. That, 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 I <laughs> messed that up. Yeah, we don't want to cro yes. cross the streets, okay. right? So yeah, the, the alginate is going to be the ones that pop, but the ones that are completely solidified are going to be agar pearls. Okay. Right? So agar spherification. Now, if you leave the alginate ones for too long, they will eventually solidify. That's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Usually you're going to make them, serve them, and they will pop. But if you want ones that are basically a little like beads that are really colorful and really flavorful, the agar uh, cold oil spherification is going to be what you're going to do. And the reason why that works is agar sets at a high temperature. So you need to heat it up to about 180 degrees, uh, sometimes all the way to a boil. And then you take it out, you're going to place it into your spherificator and you're going to put it into cold oil. If you were to put it directly into water, it would not create the nice, um, you know, circular shape that you're looking for. And also it may dilute it by sitting in the water. So you want to do it into cold oil in the you know, the temperature of the oil will cause it to set really quickly. So you can have a ton of pearls very, very fast. And there's different ways to do it between syrificator and uh, rapid caviar makers and um, a multitude of uh, techniques. But we really like the syrificator because we're making a lot of spheres for this dish. Yeah, uh, so I think what we're offering people are two different ways to achieve spherification. Yep. And if they're thinking about, okay, which technique is right for me, um, a couple of things that I'm hearing, one is, you know, the agar is going to be solid, the 
alginate is going yep. to be popping. Um, the other thing that I seem to be hearing is if you're trying to do agar, you have to heat the liquid. Yes. But with the alginate, you don't. Yeah, so with the alginate, that's why I did the ginger in here, because if you heat ginger, it loses a little bit of its, its kind of intense flavor. And mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to make sure that I had that in the dish that we're doing here. We're doing a really nice carrot cake with some different spheres on top. But the carrot is okay, because I'm making a carrot uh, cold oil spherification. And the carrot's okay to be heated. You know, you still mm -hmm. get that really nice kind of bright carrot flavor. So yeah, if you want, if you don't want to heat it, I would definitely go with direct spherification. If it can be heated and it's not an issue, go with your, uh, your cold oil okay. spherification. Are there any other points of consideration that someone should keep in mind, you know, when they're weighing, should I do one versus the other? Sure. If you're going to do something that's very acidic, mm -hmm. uh, agar will hold on, you know, will hold up to acid a lot better than sodium alginate. Okay. If you're going to do something acidic and you want it to be uh, using the sodium alginate, you're going to have to use sodium citrate. All of that can be found, uh, links in the description below. We've written a lot of articles on mm -hmm. it. Um, so there are little things that you need to worry about, but if you're making something acidic, something that can be heated, go with the agar cold oil spherification. It makes a really great sphere. Uh, they do have a good texture and they they look really beautiful on plate too. Yeah, and the the texture is more like you know if you're if you like bubble tea, it's kind of like the bubbles in the bubble tea. Yeah, right? it has a tiny yeah. bit of chew, but it generally you know opens up. You'll get the flavor out of it, and it's uh, it's not offensive at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you say it's not offensive. No, no, it's good. <laughs> um, so the other thing I'm kind of hearing is the question of storage, and, and we know that with alginous spherification, if you just leave it out, it will solidify, but not in a delicious way, but more like I don't want to eat this anymore kind of way. Um, for the agar, if you make them ahead of time, can you store them in the oil? Yeah, so you can okay. store them in, in whatever oil. Now, depending on whatever your presentation is, if you wanted to rinse them off, you absolutely can. With this recipe, we're going to be rinsing them off because we're going to be putting them on top of carrot cake and you, people don't necessarily want oil on top of their carrot cake. But if you're doing it in a savory dish and it's totally fine, you can then store them in a flavorful oil that kind of complements whatever flavor it is, right? If I was doing a, uh, a carrot, um, sphere for a savory dish and I wanted to store it in walnut oil, right, then I could get a little bit of that extra mm -hmm. flavor uh, into, you know, on the outside of the pearls. You could serve them directly out of the oil. For this, we're going to be rinsing them off. If you were to store these in water, mm -hmm. they would become waterlogged. The same with the direct spherification. Because they take in the, the calcium from the water, they can also pull in the water. Okay. So by doing that, then you know, through osmosis, you're going to become you know, very waterlogged. With these, if you wanted to store them at least for you know, no longer than an hour, just put them back into a flavorful liquid that's made of. So like if you had ginger juice, put it right into the ginger juice. That way it doesn't become waterlogged at all. Yeah. But yeah, you can absolutely store these. The agar ones you can store for uh, multiple days, but the uh, the direct about an hour is what you get out of it. Yeah, and I bet someone out there is thinking, what about reverse verification? We, we just episode for another day. Yeah, we just <laughs> wanted to save that for another day. We kind of <laughs> wanted to do a little bit of an apples to yeah. apples comparison here. So don't worry, we will cover the other verification techniques in yeah. the future. Um, now I think we've we kind of given a pretty good overview of the whys and hows. Um, can let's talk about the tools that you used in order to do spherification. What do you need? All right. So generally, you're going to need uh, something to make the spheres out of. You're going to need a couple bowls. One of them is going to be for your calcium liquid. The other one's going to be for some rinse water, which is this one here. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're starting off, generally, I would suggest using just uh, a perfect caviar <coughs> maker. I try not to knock everything over. So perfect caviar maker, you can swirl the water, you can drop them in one by one through uh, the perfect caviar maker. That's gonna be the best so you can see, you know, that your first drop, if it dissipates into the liquid, there's an issue, right? You're mm -hmm. not going through hundreds of them and making a mess. Uh, you can see, oh, there's an issue with my liquid. Let me, you know, step back and figure out what's happening here. Mm -hmm. If you do realize that it's good and you wanna make, you know, hundreds, even, you know, up to thousands depending on what you can then use a rapid caviar maker. So each little push of this will give you about 96 droplets. And when this is completely full, you can get you know quite a few hundred uh, spheres out of it. And then if you want to make thousands upon thousands of spheres, you can just grab the spherificator and you can just keep pumping them out. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as you have ample water with calcium in it, you can continue to make spheres until your you know, flavorful liquid's gone. But if you're trying to make a lot of spheres in a small amount of water, it'll eat up all that calcium. So just make sure that you have uh, enough that you can you know, swirl it, they're not gonna stick together, all those great things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so the tools are relatively simple, it's just technique, which takes a little bit of know-how. 
Yeah, so I think a lot of people, when they get started with spherification, they get a little intimidated because there's a lot of measurement, yeah. a lot of precision. We do have a lot of great resources on our blog for troubleshooting. We're not going to go too far into it this episode, but if you do have any specific questions that you run into with spherification, leave them in the comments below and we'll be happy to answer them. Yeah. Um, so what are we demoing today to see spherifi yeah, <laughs> spherification in action. So we're actually going to be de demoing uh, cold oil spherification with our, our carrot spheres. Mm -hmm. Then we're also going to be dem demoing, demoing. Uh, it's <laughs> ginger, when you yeah, can't say things. <laughs> ginger spheres uh, with direct spherification. Okay. Both of them are going to be through the spherificator because they, they both work really great. Okay. And uh, figuring out how to do um, cold oil spherification through the spherificator is really you know, it's something that we didn't expect would actually work, but it mm -hmm. works really great. Is you you can pump it through just like you would a regular, you know, uh, direct spherification. The only thing is that I put some hot water through afterwards just to make sure it, you know, gets out anything that could be stuck in the lines mm -hmm. in here because it does solidify. Yep. So that's just one thing to watch out for. So in here I have my ginger sphere liquid, right? So I'm going to take. This, I'm going to swirl my calcium water. The reason why I swirl, swirl it is that when it hits the, uh, the sphere hits the water, it gets pulled away. So if I'm sitting directly over it, you know, if I keep pumping them out and this water is still, they can clump together, mm -hmm. right? So I make sure my water is moving. And the same thing I'll do with the oil here. So I can then go through. And you may see a little tails on them. That's totally fine. It's going to happen with the, some spheres. It's amazing how quick that process is. Right. It's, it's uh, kind of fun to watch, too. So I have plenty of ginger spheres there. Mm -hmm. So I can just swirl it up. You can see that they're all separated. I made sure that my calcium water had enough calcium in it. If it doesn't have enough calcium in it, sometimes it'll take a lot longer to uh, start to create that gel and then that's when they can stick together. So I just make sure that I'm getting enough uh, calcium into my water here. Okay. And it could be one to two percent. You can ge go even higher if you're, you're nervous of it. Right. So then here I have some heated liquid that has my agar in it and I'm going to put it directly in. I let this cool just slightly. And it's that simple. I just have two, you know, one charger, I just switch it over, and then I can go directly into making my cold oil sphere. So I make sure my oil is moving quickly. And the oil slows down really fast too. And you can see with this, make sure they give a quick little stir because some of them tend, tend to sit on top. Mm -hmm before they sink. Especially when oil is cold, it will uh, you know, be a little bit more viscous. The kind of interesting thing is because it's hitting the oil, it's not getting the tail. So these are actually perfectly round little spheres. Yes, these are really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes um, as long as they're not stuck together, it's okay. Uh, you may find that if you're you have too much sodium alginate, you'll get like strings in between them, so it almost looks like a like a like a ball chain necklace. If anyone remembers the nineties. Um, mm. <laughs> so here we go. Yourself? Yeah, I am dating myself. Oh. So like I said, this is really viscous oil, so I want to make sure it pulls up off the bottom. But these are already set. So if I were to pull these up, you can see that they're already set. Mm -hmm. They're really nice. And these can sit in there until I need them. Right. So okay. Great. And how long do you recommend people generally wait before they start taking the alginate spheres out? 30 seconds to a minute. Okay. Once again, depending on your calcium, if you mm -hmm. load it up with calcium. So that's why I'm pulling them out now. Yeah. I mean, we generally recommend if it's your first few times doing it, start, start small. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to dump some of these in here. All right. So while Scott's doing that, so we want to talk about this week's giveaway. So you can win one of these new matte black spherificators. I don't know if the camera is picking them up very well, the difference between the old and new models. They both work great, but I kind of personally love the uh, the new look on them. You know, the matte black is just a little bit cooler and a little bit more and fun to look at. And it doesn't pick at. up uh, 
fingerprints. So if you're doing Correct. something like taking a video or, or photography, mm -hmm. it makes it a little bit easier too. Yeah, so definitely enter to win by leaving in the comments below something that you would like to spherify. Just so you know, you will get not only the spherificator, but also usually comes with a, a bunch of ingredients in there to help you get started. And if you need replenishments because you love spherifying, Oh, I'm having Spirifying. trouble. Spirifying. <laughs> I'm having trouble with that word today. Spirifying things. Uh, of course, we carry all the ingredients here at Modernist Pantry. So I'm just going to rinse these off. It's okay if a little bit of oil gets in your rinse water. I put a lot of rinse water so that the oil will come right up to the top and it won't be kind of sitting in it. Mm -hmm. So just make sure these come out. And this you know, this uh, oil is just sitting in the freezer. You don't have to put it in like a blast chiller or anything. It can sit in a normal freezer until it comes down to the correct temperature. Okay. Just about, you know, anywhere under 20 degrees is going to be good. Fahrenheit, that is. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm going to leave a few of them in here for time's sake. But if I mix these up, you get a really nice kind of mixture. Mm -hmm. There'll be mixture in textures as well as mixture in colors. Yeah, that's really pretty. So this over a little bit. So really simply, I can... I want to mix them up nice so I get a nice mixture. And then I'm just going to put it on top of our carrot cake. And this carrot cake's been on our website for a while. We really love this recipe. Mm. Um, extremely light, but it has a lot of great flavor. That's not enough. <laughs> Let's make sure. Get a good amount on there. Mm. So This one escaped. I will try it. This is a little ginger sphere. <laughs> Mm. Very gingery, yum. So we have those right there, and then I took some of the carrot tops, and I candied the carrot tops, so we get some Ooh. nice crispy candied carrot leaves right on top. And Janie, yes, I forgot to get you a fork. I know. <laughs> just, just grab this and start putting it in my mouth. Like, nah. Okay. It's all right. I'm going to just grab a couple of the pearls, I think. All right. Yeah, it's really simple to do. And if you wanted to, like I said, you can make those uh, mm -hmm. agar pearls ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Make the ginger pearls right when you need them. And then you're able to have a really nice kind of cool dish. Yeah, I really like the flavors in both of these. Like the ginger and the carrot are both like really, really, really bright flavors. And they come through perfectly and it's a fun thing to do it's a fun yeah. thing to do with your kids you know teach them about science and play with your food at the same time mm. yeah super nice all right so hopefully what we've done today is show you the differences between agar spherification and alginous spherification and giving you some tips on if you're thinking about doing it which one is right for you depending on what exactly it is you're trying to spherify and also what's the occasion and how long you want to keep it for if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And of course, enter to win a spherificator by telling us what you would like to spherify. So until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garen. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. To get today's recipes and all of our recipes, remember to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you get recipes, ask a chefs, tips and tricks, and more. And if you haven't already, tell a friend so they know what's going on here at WTF. And as always, to get any of the ingredients you saw today, you can go to modernistpantry.com to shop. And until next time, we'll be here in the test kitchen helping you create memorable and magical experiences.